Hi everybody, I'm Ross Treelevin, and this is another Sprague Spotlight interview. Today I'm here with Erica. Erica, could you introduce yourself to everybody at Sprague? Yeah, I'm Erica Probst. I am the new BAC for the brand new Marysville branch. Well, new BAC, you didn't just start. Well, going on two years. So in July will be my second anniversary with Sprague. So I just had my full calendar year, first full calendar year uh, with you guys. That's awesome. Well, so when you started, what was the office like, the physical office like when you started? Um, it was a warehouse in Marysville, right next to the train tracks. So I could see the trains coming by in my window. And every time I was on a call, I'd have to like, oh, I'm so sorry, I need to place you on hold. Like there's a train going by. So that was interesting. Um, the roof leaked when it rained, which obviously up here is pretty often. So we got some buckets out to catch some of that. And got very hot in the summertime and very cold uh, closer to the end there when we were there in the winter it was it was an interesting space not 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 our best space we ever had now what is it like now when we actually get to go to the office it's amazing open floor plan got desks everywhere you know nice little meeting space some offices it's very clean fresh modern we got the big spray sign on the outside and the slash on the front of the building so you can see us bright from the freeway it's a little better than it was before, probably. Much. Yeah, I don't, I'm not worried about going into work and make sure I have enough layers on. <laughs> that's, a, that's right. I forgot that building was cold before. Oh, yeah, it was freezing. I had a little desk heater. That's right. Going. Yeah. Well, what was, uh, 2020 was a weird year for all of us. How, uh, what was it like for you? Um, well, we had just moved in, I think, January or February of 2020. We had one branch meeting before the whole world shut down, and we kind of had to figure out what we were doing and shut down the office and keep the doors locked. And it's been a little lonely, but I've also found um, trying to communicate with other people in different ways is kind of bringing us closer together. So like asking more questions and just reaching out to people and making sure that they're okay. But definitely working from home has been a tough transition. I think I've moved to three different spots in my house uh, trying to get a system that works and finally figured something out so I can work comfortably from home and make sure I get everything done. Yeah, for those who are following along at home, this is neither of us are in our uh, <laughs> our spring offices today. We're in our, our home offices today. Um, now, did you just establish any new routines or habits uh, during the pandemic that you intend to keep after the pandemic? Um, I did pick up cycling during the pandemic. So I kind of found my dad's old mountain bike discarded in the garage at his house and stole it from him and ended up getting a new bike for Christmas. So I got really into that. I hope to keep that habit. Um, habits, I guess the other ones I just hope to break, like putting on something other than sweatpants for work and <laughs> making sure you shower before you leave the house. and. You know? Yes, I uh, I uh, found myself in some bad habits or watching more TV than usual or some of those things too. But, you know, I've got some habits going as well. Yeah. Um, well what's the first thing when the pandemic is over that you plan on doing? Oh, I don't know. Hugging people, probably. <laughs> I'm a big people person. So this has been a little tough being so disconnected from everybody. So I just like want to get out and see everybody and see how they're doing and catch up and, you know, see all my friends' kids. I'm not sure that they'll remember me after after this being gone so long. I know that feeling. The uh, feels like the only interactions I have with people outside our pod are just on the sidewalk, you know, but six feet apart. It's very mm -hmm. strange. Um, Mostly, it's just been me and the UPS guy at the office, <laughs> the closest friend right now. <laughs> well, it's not just you and the UPS guy. There seems to be a cutout of Mr. Bean, a cardboard cutout of Mr. Bean that has floated around mysteriously in the Marysville office for years. What's the story behind that? Yes. So I actually had seen a photo of him online and thought it was just the most terrifying thing ever and that it would be super funny to buy and then hide in my, my house when I was still living with my parents. So it was the first thing I did and it just became like a family game where people would move him around in the middle of the night or like when nobody was home and it was you kind of like walk slowly around corners to make sure he's not there. So I just thought, you know, with that social norm work like you play that it was fair game to bring him into the office and I did get some pretty good reactions. I will admit with the newer open office, it's a little harder to hide him because there's not as many rooms or corners to put him around, but he still does his job. Has, has anyone had an adverse reaction to running into Mr. Bean? Yeah, so some people actually started signing the back of him and like with what they said <laughs> in like censored versions, 
But I remember in the old warehouse, uh, the first Marysville office that I was in, the front desk um, and the bathroom were completely on other sides of the building. And I had put him in the bathroom behind the door. And the first day that Shane met Mr. Bean, I could hear him clear, <laughs> clear across the building. And I think it's one of my favorite reactions so far. <laughs> Said some pretty inappropriate things. That is awesome. I can't even imagine Shane saying inappropriate things anyway. So I just love that you totally got him that day. That's yeah, awesome. I got a little worried, but I heard him laughing. So I figured it was okay. Yeah, that's funny. Well, so uh, I, the rumor is out there that you're a big fan of the, the show The Office. Um, how is your role at Sprague similar to the roles in, uh, in the show The Office? Oh, I don't know. I like to think of myself as a prankster, but Maybe I think there was a saying, I don't know if you if you're familiar with the office at all, but you know, like you take those quizzes online if you take it and find out you're Michael and take it again just to see if you get Jim, like you're definitely a Michael. <laughs> I feel like I might be a Michael where I think I'm being funny and maybe other people might not think the same things. <laughs> so I don't know. I did get Gary into watching it. So he said he'd watch the whole thing and we do make some jokes back and forth. So it's kind of nice. That's awesome. That's really cool. So, um, what does winning the Bernie Tree Love and BAC of the Year Award mean to you? Oh, this year, because it was based off of nominations, I've heard previously that it was based mostly off of numbers um, yeah. alone, but winning this year actually means a whole lot to me. Um, just hearing all the nice things that people have to say and how much my work is actually appreciated and that all of my stress and hair pulling and loneliness was worth it and that and like nothing I do goes unnoticed and I think that I really needed to hear that especially um, after going through 2020 and just being again so separated from everybody that they are really seeing everything that I'm doing and they do appreciate the work that's happening behind the scenes <laughs> the magic as some of my technicians call it well I mean then they came out of the woodwork to make sure that we knew how much you meant to them uh, and so I think it's pretty cool to uh, to have so many nominations for you and to be chosen. Congratulations. Yeah, it means a lot. It really does. And it's been a goal since I found out that you guys do awards or something like that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be BAC of the year. I didn't think it would be like the first full calendar year I was here, but figured well, out. Well, you know, <laughs> a, a year ago, I thought the pandemic would be over in a couple of weeks. Then we just, we just all lock up for a little bit and then it would go away. So, mm -hmm. you know, you never know how these things are going to work themselves out. So, yeah. So if, if you uh, were talking to somebody who was just starting at Sprague, what advice would you have for them? Ooh, I don't know. I feel like coming to Sprague, I've worked some pretty terrible places and that it's just very refreshing um, seeing how much support Sprague has and how much people really build each other up. So just get out there and connect with your coworkers, I guess is the only advice that I have. Just get to know people. It's only gonna make your experience here better. You know, I think that uh, your office has lots of people who like to connect in it. And that's one of the things, too, that I think makes the Marysville office so special. And uh, they were just looking like for they were looking for somebody like you to uh, to help put it all together. Yeah, no, I feel really blessed with the team that I have. I don't I've never been a place where, you, you know, you, there's always somebody that rubs you the wrong way. And I haven't run into anybody here like that. And everybody is just so willing to step up and help out, uh, help each other out and make sure that all the work gets done and finding ways to help the customers and making sure that all of their bases are covered. So no pest issues. It's just really nice. <laughs> no pest issues. No if pest we do, issues. we know somebody who we can call. So, yeah. well, congratulations on being the 2020 BAC of the year. Uh, and thank you for joining me today on the spotlight. Thank you.